Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Cyan. I create a load of different types of content, one of those being favorites videos and obsession videos like you're seeing here today. I haven't done a favorites video in a very, very long time. Today we're talking about beauty, fashion, books, entertainment, all of those good, good, good things. And I'm very excited to do this video. I love doing this kind of concept at the end of the year. I've done tons of best of videos over the years and I haven't done that video concept in a really long time so I can't wait to bring that back this year. If that's something you want to see let me know in the comments down below and also if you want to see more obsession favorites videos give this video a thumbs up too so I know you like these videos. Go grab your cup of coffee, go grab some wine, a beer, water if you are a non-alcoholic drinker, <laughs> I am drinking decaf. I only ever drink decaf coffee or anything anymore. So go grab something to drink, a snack, whatever it may be. Get ready along with this video or just have this on for entertainment. And uh, let's get into all of my summer 2023 obsessions. All right, we're going to start with beauty. One being a makeup tool that I jumped on the bandwagon with, and that is a powder puff. It's something that I wasn't really ever interested in until it became more and more popular. I do have to say I did fall into the trend. Um, I don't fall into trends very often, but this one is something that I was seeing a huge difference in makeup application with, so I was very, very intrigued and curious and I had to get one of the best ones on the market or in my opinion what's been said is one of the best ones on the market and that is Beauty Blenders. So this is the Beauty Blender Puff. Mine is disgusting. That's how you know it's used and loved but I I do really like this. I use it every single day that I do my makeup. I brought it with me on vacation. Currently, while you're watching this video, I'm on my way back from Florida on a trip, so this is definitely in my makeup bag. I just, I really like this. I think it's really great for application. I actually just touched up with this product uh, before I sat down to film this video. It's just a really great product. It's easy to throw in a bag, um, but I do love it for powder application. I haven't tried it for any kind of liquid application, um, but I do, I really do enjoy using this. I don't put my fingers in here a ton. I actually just kind of put them under the band and then I do it that way. I did in the beginning do it this way. I don't really see that much of a difference. I'm sure like this way you might have a little bit more um, pressure and maybe a little bit more control, but this way I think is just as, just as good. So either way, I like, I love this and it's like 15 bucks. I got it right at Sephora. All right, I think this might be one of my top favorite things that I found this year in beauty and keep that in mind when I do my best of video in December slash the new year. These vinyl inks from Maybelline, oh my gosh. I have never loved a lip product more than these before. So I am very much a liquid lipstick girl. I know that they can be drying, but there are thousands upon thousands of different types of liquid lipsticks out on the market. And I have always just kind of stuck by the fact that I love those. I'm not a bullet lipstick person. So because I'm a full coverage girl and I love long wearing lip products, I really was kind of on the hunt for something. And I'm, honestly, I was more intrigued by this packaging than anything. That's what caught my eye. So packaging definitely is important. But these, like I said, are the Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink Lipsticks. I have the shade 15 Peachy, which is this one right here and then 35 Cheeky, which is this one right here. I'm wearing Cheeky today, and I would say that this, this one I wear more than Peachy. Cheeky, I'm almost out of. I bought these in probably the new year, January, February, March, somewhere in there. In March, I took a trip with my mom, and we just like had an overnight girls night, and I remember telling her, asking her kind of too, like, have you ever heard of the trend where <laughs> like your go-to, your best looking lipstick on you is the color or shade of your nipples? And she goes, yep, I know what exactly what you're talking about. And I said, okay, well, that's this. TMI, I know. <laughs> but 
you're gonna get a lot more of that on this channel um <laughs> this is exactly that this shade i think is my lips but better long wear full coverage beautiful so comfortable I love the way that it looks. A thin amount on and it stays for hours. I can retouch and it doesn't feel like cakey is the best word I can put it. It doesn't separate. It doesn't pull apart. It doesn't bunch or dry. It's just, it's beautiful and I love it. I will definitely be repurchasing this. This is going to be like a go-to forever and ever and ever so i highly recommend these products they're under ten dollars at the drugstore walmart wherever this is the honest cream cheek and lip color from honest <laughs> honest beauty and coral peach i've been watching tati westbrook for years on youtube and one of the blushes she constantly was talking about was an honest blush and it was the cream blushes i'm pretty sure i don't know if that it was this shade in particular this is beautiful the way that it goes on looks stunning it's very long wearing i can see it throughout the day this is so beautiful i love this it looks really good over powder products too and that's when i know a product is good is when it can go over powder products i really like this i will definitely in the future be buying more shades or this color i am more so a rose or peach type of blush person and this is beautiful i i highly recommend this blush we are going to talk about a perfume and it is the brand i am and this is the scent good i love this perfume i think this is probably my favorite perfume ever i have never been on the hunt for a perfume before i've never asked for a specific perfume for my birthday or for christmas or anything like that I love this. The scent of it really reminds me of like sunscreen, but like not gross sunscreen. It just smells really fresh and clean, but also like you have sunscreen on, like you've been in the sun. You're just, it smells so good. It's not too warm. It's not um, spicy or anything like that, but I think this smells so sexy and this is the perfume I wore all last summer i will never not have this on hand so highly highly recommend this if you are like love the smell of sunscreen and all of that and think of summer and want a summer fragrance get this but don't please don't sell them out so i can't ever find it again all right last but not least in the beauty front of things we're going to talk about nails so i no longer go to the nail salon which is going to be really hypocritical because next week i'm going to the nail salon but i don't go to the nail salon for like manicures hardly ever i don't think i've gone once this year for a manicure i have gone for a pedicure and i will always continue to go for pedicures that's something that if i'm really wanting like a good deep pedicure from somewhere someone then i'm gonna go do that won't go for a manicure anymore because i have kiss nails these are the ones that i have on currently the bare but better i talked about these nails in my last video my fall haul i'll leave a card here but i love 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 these nails but these are the other ones that i have and i have more in my drawer i have probably six to eight right now on hand now i don't do these every single week i'll give my nails a break i do love being able to do that i love being able to give my nails a break and take them off when i please and when i choose and then putting a new set back on i've tried the gel they're really good i haven't tried this style yet but i like these the Vogish Fantasy, I just got these the other day. These are so beautiful. And then these are the Jelly Fantasy. Very, very pretty. I love fake nails. I do not do the press-on ones though. Press-on do not stay for me. I only ever get the ones that I have the glue for. Press-on do not stay long enough. They're not strong enough and I don't like the sizes. They're not big enough for my um, nail beds. All right, let's discuss fashion. I'm getting more and more into fashion. I love fashion. I have always loved fashion, even when I was a teenager, even younger than that. Um, I've always very been much into it, but I'm more confident as an adult that like I, I'm doing things that I don't typically do. Um, one being my very first items, a jean, distressed jean jacket. So I loved distressed jeans. I talked about that in my last video, but I 
I stumbled across this in Maury Says. This is from Maury Says. If I can find the link for this, I'll leave it down below. Actually, that goes for anything that I talk about in this video. I will try to find links and leave everything down below. Some might be affiliate codes to like through Amazon. Just throwing that out there. This jacket was like originally 70 something dollars. I got it for way cheaper than that. I think I actually got it for like 75% off or something. It's a nice quality jacket to the point where I feel like I can use it as a transitional coat, if you will. I also wear it throughout the day. So like, I'm not just using it as a jacket to get to and from, you know, a building to my car to a car to a building. I'm actually wearing it because I love it because it's such a fashionable piece. So there's pieces of it that are distressed. There's two pockets, which is great. Actually, there's technically four. Um, which I love. There's two inner pockets as well, which is great. And I just love the detailing. You can cuff it, pop the collar. This is my favorite piece. I've worn and worn and worn this like a million times and I love it. I will never get used to the fact that I love a jean jacket and I found one that fits me and fits me well and I'm confident in because I was in the mindset that like I'm never going to be able to find a jean jacket that fits my body and my body shape and something that I'm confident in until I found this. Something else that I was proven wrong about was biker shorts. I was very much the type of girl I was like who needs biker shorts? Um, shorts in general, honestly, just because of my body type, my stature. I am a plus size, bigger, curvier girl. Like, no, we don't do, you know, summer is supposed to be your least favorite season. It's supposed to be your least favorite time of year. You hate summer because you don't look good in anything. That was very much my mindset until last summer when I was rocking shit. I wasn't used to rocking. I started to fall in love with biker shorts and I realized that I really wanted biker shorts that I could use. It was what I was gravitating towards to do like normal household things. I was wearing them in the house a lot more, you know, around, doing chores, running errands, all of that. I loved the fact that some had pockets, loved that. So I bought two pairs of biker shorts from TJ Maxx. Um, this set well, this pair to be one of them, this like green pair, it's got pockets. Um, I love these ones. The color is a little hard for me because I don't have a ton to go with it, but I really do like these. They're very much an athletic biker short. The thing I don't like about them is the second pair that I had gotten with this because it was a two pair was black. I thought it had pockets and it didn't. So I went on Amazon and I found ones I do have pockets and I got a set that's black and navy blue which is perfect because I have a couple of shirts that go with this. This one I'm not as in love with just because it's more of a cloth material and I don't love that. They're very comfortable. I believe these ones are a six or seven inch seam and the navy blue are an eight. So these ones are longer too which I don't love. And lastly, I don't have a specific piece. Well, I guess I could say the one that I'm wearing. Um, but dresses. I wore a shit ton of dresses last summer. I wore a lot of skirts last summer and I was very excited to do the same this summer. And I will say probably half of my closet is dresses. And I love that because I used to be, again, very in the mindset that like I couldn't wear dresses or there were no dresses that fit my body and my style. I felt like I had to, if I was going to wear a dress, that it needed to cover a lot of me. I wasn't going to show off my arms, which I still don't love my arms, but I wouldn't show them and I would be very insecure. And now I live in dresses like this, this is a dress. So I have very much changed that mindset and I love that I've changed that mindset. Right, let's go to books. So last year I had a goal. I wanted to read a specific number of books. I wanted to read four books last year and I ended up reading nine. So this year I had a goal of reading 10 books and so far I've read seven. I have read three and a half books <laughs> in the matter of just a month in the month of August. I'm currently still in August right now um, when I'm filming this. And I want to talk about the books that I've read 
this summer this month so far that I love that I highly recommend that I think you'll get something out of or are great for entertainment purposes so let's talk about one that's going to pull at your heartstrings but I think is super important as a person to read and I highly recommend it is a newer book on the market and it's a New York Times best seller uh, it is from a TikToker. her name is I'm gonna butcher her last name but Hadley Laos uh, she's an RN. She's a hospice nurse. I will leave her uh, handle down below. I follow her on Instagram since I don't have TikTok. But she wrote this book. It's called The In Between. It's unforgettable encounters during life's final moments. In this deeply personal memoir, passionate advocate for end-of-life care, Hadley shares moving stories of joy, wisdom, and redemption from her patient's final moments. Talking about death and dying is considered taboo in polite company and even in the medical field. Our ideas about dying are confusing at best. Will our memories flash before our eyes? Will regrets consume our thoughts? Does a bright light appear at the end of a tunnel? For most people, dying will be a slower process, one that can be eased with preparedness, good humor, and a little bit of faith. At the forefront of changing attitudes around palliative care is hospice nurse Hadley, who shows here that the end of life care can teach us just as much about how to live as it does about how to die. Hadley was raised in a strict religious household but began questioning her beliefs when she was in high school after the sudden death of a friend. Pregnant at 19 and shunned by her community, Hadley enrolled in nursing school to be able to support herself and her baby. But nursing soon became more than a job. When she focused on palliative care and hospice work, it became a calling. In the in-between, Hadley recounts the most impactful experiences she had with the people she's worked with. From the woman who never once questioned her faith until she was close to death, to the older man seeing visions of his late daughter, to the young patient who laments that she spent too much of her short life worrying about what others thought of her while also sharing her own fascinating journey. Written with profound insight, humility, and respect, the in-between is a heart-rendering memoir that shows how caring for others can transform a life while also offering wisdom and comfort for those dealing with loss and providing inspiration for how to live now. This book is fucking phenomenal. I literally cried every single chapter. I read it in a, about a day. It's so, so good. Her writing is astronomically good. Uh, she actually wanted to go to school for writing and become an author to become a writer and she ended up getting pregnant and taking the nursing route of things instead to provide for her child and her story alone is amazing, but I think how she wraps it into being a hospice nurse and taking care of her patients, it's just so beautifully well done. And to know that it's real and the things that she went through and the things that her patients had gone through and learning about them, it's an amazing book. It really will open up your eyes and make you question what you believe. And I think that's really important because as a person, you're a full-fledged person developing person you're never done learning or you shouldn't at least be and I think that's what this book touches on to it it should make you think about your own life so if you've seen this book in stores or read about it online or heard about it online or seen her TikToks or anything like that which is actually how I found her I found some of her TikToks and reels online I highly recommend reading this my mom read it first then my grandmother and then me and we all cried <laughs> um, and we all love this book so highly highly recommend so last year I started reading a series of books from Susan Stoker my mom my grandmother and my aunt were all reading Susan Stoker last year if not the year before and I was like all right I gotta hop on this bandwagon I wanted to read a ton of books last year anyway so my aunt lent me her book one of her books that she had and I read it within like three days I loved it it's my favorite book of hers only probably because it's the first one I read of hers I love it it's so good it pulls at your heartstrings but it's good. It's sexy. It's definitely an adult book, <laughs> um, not for kids' eyes. So if you're 18 or older, highly recommend these books. Um, but they're so good. I think they're a fantastic read. They're a very easy read. It's very, very simple. Actually, so is Hadley's, I should say that, but different genres. So I ended up buying another book this year 
uh, and buying and reading it. And that was Rescuing Emily. So the very first one that I read last year was by Susan Stoker, Rescuing Rain. It's from her Delta Force series. This one that I have in hand here that I actually bought myself is Rescuing Emily. I'm not going to read um, about this one. I'm going to read about the next one because that's what I actually read this summer. But I read this in February. I couldn't put it down. So, so good. <laughs> so get that one too. Um, they're actually a part of, of a series. You'd want to get them in the series and read them down the list. Um, so I recommend that. But the next one after Emily was Rescuing Harley. I read this in a day. A video game coder Harley Kelso thought a tandem skydive would help her make her latest game more realistic. Instead, it literally put her in the arms of the sexiest man she's ever seen. Geeky to the core, Harley is the polar opposite of Big and Burly Beckett, but that doesn't stop her from wanting to play more carnal games with the sexy soldier. When Beckett, coach Ralston, offers to fill in at a friend's skydiving club he doesn't suspect he'll meet a woman who will change his life and he definitely doesn't expect her to save it but that's exactly what happens when an accident mid-air forces harley to land them both safely she's earned a coach's complete gratitude and even more sexual interest until she disappears without a trace oh my god this book is so good i couldn't put it down her writing is so good and again like I'll just like tease this like first main page this is what it looks like it's not difficult by any means it's very very quick and fast um and again read them in order so don't read this one and then read Emily it won't make any sense it'll actually spoil Emily's storyline for you because they intertwine um but they're written so so well I then went and read marrying Emily which is kind of giving away rescuing Emily read that one again in a day and then I don't have that book physically I got it on my Kindle app because I finally was like I was finished with this one and then I just felt like a void <laughs> I was like all right I'm I'll read online next one I'm gonna read is uh, rescuing Cassie I think it's called and I'm very excited I know I'm gonna love that one too but there's other series if you're not interested in the Delta Force series there's other one there's a SEAL team series um, they're pretty much military heroes it's very much a big sexy military kind of guy that comes in swoops in save the girl now if you're not into those storylines it's okay not all of these are like guy saves girl some of them are um some of them like this one in particular is kind of like girl saves guy and guy saves girl um which i i love both of those storylines i think they're great i am a sucker though for a man saving a woman i just i love them that is very much how i like it's so sexy to me. We are going to talk about entertainment now. Let's start with a couple of YouTubers that I really, really love. I found this summer. One I actually found a while ago. I watched your videos like over a year, maybe more than a year ago. But Renee Amberg, I've talked about, I think, about her on my channel or on my Instagram, one of the two. I love her videos. Her videos are amazing. Her style of content and her editing and all of that is superb i'll leave her link for her channel down below she is very she's very different from any youtuber i've found over the years originally found her channel because i was looking for productivity motivational staying on like a content calendar plan kind of thing i love her channel i love how authentic she is i love how dreamy her videos are and how real um they're a type of video that like when i want to relax that's who i want to go to when i want to be able to just like get in a very aesthetic comfortable cozy get me in the mood kind of thing i want to watch her videos because they make me relax they make me get back down to earth a little bit and not be so materialistic but i just i love her videos another one that i actually she is new to me this year is michelle reed her channel oh my god i actually need to watch her very new video that she posted today um but her channel is amazing she's actually my age she is just a sweetheart it seems um she is a mom to be and 
that's I think another thing that <clears throat> these women that I'm finding and watching and really relating to are in chapters of their lives that I wish to be in that I am leaning towards getting into and I love that I want that for my life to be going and I think that's why I love them so much and I resonate with them so much her videos are just dreamy and wonderful they're very much day in my life week in my life uh, again, I was looking for kind of productivity, monthly resets, stuff like that for inspiration, and I found her this year very well thought out, very relaxing, very authentic to her. So, love that. Go check both of their channels out. One movie I want to talk about is a movie that I think is extremely, uh, not think, I know is extremely important to watch, and I think it should be the only movie that we're all talking about in the year 2023 and we continue to talk about into the future, and that is The Sound of Freedom. I watched this movie last month in July. It came out on July 4th, and it came out into select theaters unless you specifically called up your theater and requested it to be shown. I was originally going to go all the way an hour away to watch this movie because I was very much under the impression that my local theater wouldn't be playing it, but to my very joyous surprise they were playing it so I ended up going a Monday after work taking myself on a little date and watching the movie. If you know nothing about this movie it is about a man from the Homeland Security who ends up quitting his job pretty much and rescuing children in all over the world. This specific mission is specific to Colombia. Jim Caviezel plays in it. He plays Tim Ballard and he does an exceptional job playing Tim Ballard. Tim Ballard is an exceptional person. He actually starts the OUR. I'll leave their information down below along with the movie, along with everything for them, and along with Angel Studios who actually is the studio that put forth the movie in the end. They ended up putting this movie together, making this movie years ago, but no production, no network wanted to pick it up. Disney had it at one point. Netflix, I believe, had it at one point too, but they wanted to strip everything wholly godly and remotely important about this movie. That's when Angel Studios picked it up and now it is a mega mega hit and no wonder why because it's something that's so incredibly important. This movie depicts the horrible situations that children are put through during child sexual trafficking. It is a hard watch. It's not supposed to be easy. It doesn't glamorize sex trafficking. It doesn't glamorize child trafficking. It doesn't glamorize anything. There is nothing in the movie that depicts children physically being sexually assaulted. However, you get the sense that that's what it's about because that is what it's about. I highly recommend seeing it, but I recommend calling up your local theaters. If you are a member of your local church, get together and watch this movie together. It is not meant for children. Um, please do not take your little children to see this movie. If you do bring your teenagers, I think that's specifically great, but I would recommend if you're going to bring your children, they should be 15, 16 plus years old, and you need to discuss it. You need to talk about it together, and you need to be with them through it because this is about watching children of all ages, but it's specifically small, small children are being forced through sex trafficking. I went away from watching this movie and I felt like I needed to do something more. One thing that I did like right away that night was I hopped onto Angel Studios website and I bought merchandise. So I ended up buying, again, I'll leave their link down below, but I ended up buying a pack of stickers. So I have a pack, I have a sticker on the back of my laptop, I have a sticker on my car, and I have a sticker on one of my water bottles at work. And I also bought this shirt. So it says, God's children are not for sale, found a freedom and Angel Studios on it. There's a bunch of other things on their website. Again, I'll leave a link down below for it, but I highly recommend watching the movie, doing something about it. I now follow OUR on Instagram and Facebook, and I think keeping up to date with stuff like this is incredibly important. 
please watch this movie and I more so recommend watching it out in theaters. If you're going to spend money on something you might as well spend money on something to advocate for a cause and that's exactly what you would be doing if you went and watched this movie. Another form of entertainment that I have been participating in is political entertainment. I am more into podcasts and episodes and even YouTube videos on specific political forums. And the biggest one that I have actually become a member in is The Daily Wire. The Daily Wire is a Republican conservative platform that pushes forward knowledge and information about important topics in your day-to-day -day world. That's not the best description on it. I will leave a link for thedailywire.com down below if you're interested in learning more about The Daily Wire and the amazing different things that they offer, different programs, uh, different resources, shows, episodes, podcasts, fun facts, all of that, and all of their different commentators because they have a million walks of life for commentators, one being Candace Owens, Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, Brett Cooper, Jordan Peterson, uh, and there's a few others that I am not so into watching yet. I haven't gotten there. Um, my favorites are Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro, and Brett Cooper. I watch Brett Cooper on YouTube, but I listen to Matt Walsh and Ben Shapiro's podcasts every single day. With that being said, I I have found a deep, deep love for politics this year. I think it's so important to find a deep, deep love for politics and find the importance in it because politics are a part of our everyday life. It's your civic duty to be a part of a political uh, climate. You should be a good member of society by contributing your uh, power and your right to be able to vote and be knowledgeable about important things in your life. Don't just mean nationally either. I think it's extremely important in your community to be vocal, to be present, to learn and be informed about things that are going on in your day-to-day -day life. It starts in your community, it starts in your town and your city, but it also branches out to nationally and then globally. But you need to stay informed. Um, and I think it's very important to get information that is accurate, um, real and true, and also that doesn't have a political gain, that doesn't have an agenda. And that's very much what I receive from The Daily Wire. I back them. <laughs> like I, I love, I love The Daily Wire. I listen to it every single day and I am a proud supporter of it. With that being said, I want to talk about my politics and my beliefs and my thoughts and my feelings here on Instagram. I think that having a political difference with somebody is actually a very good thing. You have something to argue about. You have a moment to actually communicate and debate and have a really good conversation. You would be surprised my beliefs and my thoughts and I'm, I'm not going to share everything here today and maybe I won't ever but I would love to be able to open a conversation and be able to be authentic with you all and talk about the things that I actually enjoy because politics is one of those things. I'm very passionate about politics. I'm very passionate where my mind and my brain is at and what my beliefs are. Then it's something that I love to talk about now and I love to learn about. I'm not going to turn into a political commentary channel by any means, but I do think it's important to be able to see that there's different layers of a person. I love makeup and fashion. I love to read, but I'm also a political person and I think it's important to be intelligent and I think it's important to be strong and confident in what you believe in. With that being said, I do want to be able to share more things here with you, different episodes, different thoughts, opinions, whatever. In future videos, I might reference some episodes, I might reference people, whatever. And again, I'm not pushing thoughts and feelings and beliefs, opinions on you. You are open to interpret things and uh, have your beliefs if they differ from mine, but if they are similar to mine, don't be afraid to speak up and say something and say something in the comments. I want you coming here to feel welcome whether you align with my beliefs 
or political feelings or not. If we don't agree on the same lipstick shade, that's perfectly fine. If we don't agree on political stances, that's okay too. I just want you to get entertainment out of here. I want you to get a feeling of I am being my most authentic and real self. That this cyan that you're seeing here right now is the same one that when I turn off this camera, I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to spend time with my family. That is the same cyan. You just might get a different outlook on me. You don't know my entire life. I don't know yours. We can agree to disagree on things, but I will never belittle silence or dull my intelligence to please somebody else. And I think that's a very important lesson to take away. Lastly, I want to just talk about this because it kind of wraps up everything that I've talked about in the last few minutes. I am very much into, and I'm going to talk about this later on down the road. I am very much in a season of my life, if you will, that I want cozy and simple, simple living authentic to me, real, things that I enjoy and put forth. So there's going to be probably a channel shift or a shift here on my channel with the content that I'm putting out. It's very much going to align with the things that I want to create and I want to see. But the biggest is just simple simplicity and not so much materialistic. I feel like I've said this already, but I really want my channel to be a reflection of the type of person that I am. And right now, at this moment in my 25th year of life, I crave simpler, I crave real, I crave being the most me in the most me manner that I can. And that's this right here, um, how I'm talking and how I'm speaking. And I think this is actually the most confident that I've ever been on camera the most me I've ever been on camera and I'm very excited to show that to the world. So with that being said, I hope you guys will stick around for whatever content I come up with. There's still going to be makeup videos. There's still going to be resets and obsessions videos. I just want to be able to share what I want to share. And at the end of the day, I want this to be a hobby. I don't want it to be a feeling of like, oh, I dread filming a YouTube video or oh, I dread editing a video. I've never loved editing videos, but the more and more I do real authentic to me videos, um, I love editing them and I love creating them. So if I can love a full process of a video, then I know I'm doing something right. I've talked a lot and I'm, I, uh, I know I'm probably boring some of you, but I am really grateful for you guys to be here. I hope you stick around. I hope if you're not already subscribed, you subscribe down below. Turn on your post notifications. I upload every other Monday, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Follow me on Instagram at Life of Psy. I post behind the scenes, extra stuff in my life, pictures. I still do pictures. Um, I'm not just real focused, but I don't post quite as often there, but that's actually very realistic. I'm not a huge poster on social media. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for sticking around. I hope you have a wonderful life. Go check out the links for everything in my description, and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful life, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye, guys.